Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you all are doing good. So in this video, I'll be introducing you about pathogen and its types. So let's start. So let's first understand about pathogen. If we talk about pathogen, then you should know that this word pathogen has been derived from Greek, where the meaning of patho is disease and gen has been taken from genin, which means to produce. It means any organism that causes disease is known as a pathogen. Now let's have a look on different type of examples of pathogen which chiefly include bacteria, fungi, viruses, protozoa, viroids and prions. These are some of the well known microbial pathogens which are known to cause various type of diseases in different types of host. Right? Now let's have a look on examples of bacterial pathogens. So if we talk about bacterial pathogens then you should know Salmonella typhi is a bacterial pathogen responsible for causing typhoid disease and Vibrio cholerae is a well known bacterial pathogen to cause cholera right so I hope you are clear about the pathogen now now we will be talking about different types of pathogens so let's see what are the types of pathogen that we are going to cover in this video so the first type is extracellular pathogen second type is intracellular pathogens intracellular pathogens are further of two types obligate intracellular pathogens and facultative intracellular pathogens and the third type of pathogens what we are going to cover in this video includes opportunistic pathogens right so now we will try to understand about each of these type of pathogen one by one so let's start from the first one that is extracellular pathogens so if we talk about extracellular pathogens then you should note that as their name is indicating extracellular means these are those type of pathogens which grow and multiply in tissue and fluids outside the host cells means extracellularly these are not able to grow and multiply inside the host cells during the course of a disease that's why we can define these pathogens like this infectious microorganisms that remain in tissues and fluids but never enter inside the host cells during the course of a disease are called as extracellular pathogens. Now let's have an example of extracellular type of pathogen. Then you should know Yersinia pestis which is known to cause plague. Plague which is also called as black death is one of the very well known extremely virulent type of extracellular pathogen. Right. So I hope you are clear about extracellular pathogens now. Now we are going to talk about intracellular pathogens. So if we talk about intracellular pathogens they are just opposite to the extracellular means these are those type of pathogenic microorganisms which grow and multiply inside the host cell right so infectious microorganisms that grow and multiply within the host cells are called as what intracellular pathogens right so let's go back we are clear about intracellular type of pathogens now previously i told that intracellular pathogens are further of two types obligate intracellular and facultative intracellular so let's talk about obligate intracellular pathogens so let's see how we can define obligate intracellular pathogens microorganisms that reside within the cells of the host but are incapable of growth and multiplication outside a host cell suppose we are interested in culturing some of the intracellular pathogens and when we are interested to culture them in laboratory under in vitro conditions then we are not able to culture them under laboratory condition why because they are strict with regard to the requirement of host cells to support their growth and multiplication. Rickettsia and Chlamydia, these are very well known examples of bacterial pathogens which are of obligate intracellular type. Rickettsia is known to cause Rocky Mountain spotted fever and typhus. And if we talk about Chlamydia, Chlamydia is known to cause Chlamydiasis, right? On the other hand, if we talk about another group of microorganism, what we call as viruses, you should know that all viruses are obligate intracellular type of pathogens. It means host cell is a mandatory requirement to favor the growth of viruses when we are interested in in vitro culturing of viruses. Let's talk about facultative intracellular pathogens now. If we talk about facultative intracellular pathogens, of course, as their name is indicating intracellular means these are also those kind of pathogenic microorganisms that reside within the cells of the host. But they can also be grown in pure culture without host cell support. What it means as the picture is indicating if we are interested in culturing these microorganisms in laboratory even then on synthetic media artificial nutritional medium these microorganisms can grow and multiply right. So Brucella abortus is one of the well known bacterial pathogen which is of facultative intracellular type and if we talk about histoplasma capsulatum histoplasma capsulatum 
is a, an example of fungal pathogen, right? Which is of facultative intracellular type. If we talk about Brucella abortus, it is a well-known causal agent of which disease? Brucellosis. That is a kind of zoonotic disease. Zoonotic diseases are well known to get transferred from animals to human also. And if we talk about histoplasma capsulatum, it is known to cause histoplasmosis, right? So this is all about facultative intracellular type of pathogens. Let's talk about the last type now, opportunistic pathogens. So if we talk about opportunistic pathogens, let's see what are these. Opportunistic pathogens are actually a part of host normal microbiota. Means whatever our normal microflora is there, opportunistic pathogen belongs to that normal microflora only, but they are able to cause disease only when the host is immunocompromised. Or we can say when such kind of normal microflora is of a particular organ and it has gained entrance to some other tissue sites, then it can become pathogenic. Let's try to understand opportunistic pathogen with the help of this picture. What this picture is indicating us? This picture is indicating us the normal microflora present in intestine, right? Now what happens if the host is immunocompromised or we can say in aged people when their immune system is impaired, not fully functional, then in that case, such kind of normal microbiota can become pathogenic and it can lead to various kind of diseases. On the other hand, what is the second condition? The second condition is this, that such kind of normal microflora is actually of intestine, but sometimes if it gains entry in some other tissue sites, then it can also become pathogenic. It means as their name is indicating opportunistic type of pathogen these are. Whenever they get opportunity to cause disease, they will lead to cause of certain type of diseases, right? So let's see what are the examples, Candida albicans and Staphylococcus aureus. If we talk about Candida albicans, then you should know that Candida albicans is actually a normal microflora of oral cavity and vagina in human. And Staphylococcus aureus is a normal microflora which is found on skin and in nasal cavity. So both of these type of microorganisms, although they are a part of normal microflora, but under above conditions, above type of conditions means when the host is immunocompromised or upon gaining entry into some other tissue sites, then they can become pathogenic and lead to cause various kind of diseases. Like Candida albicans can result in causing candidiasis or sometimes Candida albicans can also lead to systemic infections which covers nails, skin, mucosal membranes. These all are different parts which are affected in the host by Candida albicans. And if we talk about Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus aureus can also lead to bacteremia, which in uh, turn can lead to what? A kind of systemic infection throughout the body. So I hope you are clear about all the types of pathogen and pathogen itself. So this is all about today's video and I hope this content is really going to help you. Thank you so much. Keep watching.